what really happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago. The Christian faith is based on the New Testament account, but some historians and theologians have very different, very controversial theories, with some scenes that may disturb you. Did Jesus die? The most celebrated human being in history was a first century Jewish revolutionary called Jesus. To his followers he was the son of God with miraculous powers to walk on water, heal the sick and even bring people back from the dead. According to them he gave his life to save mankind. He was crucified and died. But on the third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. But throughout history, people have responded differently to this story. There have been those so inspired by the crucifixion that they wanted to share the experience. There have also been those who denied the resurrection and have themselves been executed for their beliefs. There have been heresies that suggest that Jesus was rescued from crucifixion and escaped to lead a secret life in southern France. And there have even been people convinced that Jesus survived and traveled to the mountain kingdoms of Kashmir, where he died at the age of 80. To try and solve this 2,000-year-old mystery, some of the most devout Christians and most expert scholars will suggest new ways of reading the Gospels and ask the question, did Jesus die on the cross? Jesus Christ was executed because he was a fundamentalist Jewish agitator in a country only precariously occupied by the Roman Empire. But he inspired a religion that has spread across the whole globe. He did this partly through his teaching and through his life and death. But most of all, he became the inspiration for millions because his followers believed that he had risen from the dead. Christianity is based upon the resurrection of Christ and upon the concept of the gospel truth to question one is to question the other. Throughout history, the church has treated these questions as heresy and persecuted those who ask them. But 2,000 years after the events, many modern scholars and theologians, and even some who were training for the priesthood, now seem to doubt the historical accuracy of the Gospels and even the literal truth of the idea that Jesus rose from the dead. I've never been able to find a real dichotomy in myself between being a good historian and a good theologian, or a good historian and a Christian, to put it very bluntly. I do not believe that gods and goddesses or anyone ever comes down from heaven and produces divine babies. I don't believe it actually happens. Nor do I think that Jesus, in a literal sense, went up to heaven to take his place at the right hand of God. But how has it happened that so many Christian theologians have managed to interpret the Bible in ways that would once have been seen as heretical? The most obvious reasons can actually be found in the original text themselves, in the four Gospels. I think all the, 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 the Gospel stories or the Gospel accounts, that they're something that, that's handed to us from childhood, really. So we, as we're sitting in our primary schools, we're told that it was Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and they were four apostles, and Jesus did this, and Jesus did that, and we see the pictures. And to a certain extent, we're not encouraged to question beyond that. We're, we're, it's presented as a, as a narrative. It's presented as, as, as a storyline that actually happened. And I think for a lot of people, their belief never goes further than that. They simply remember these stories, and that's what happened. And it, I think the problem is, for individuals, was when you start moving beyond that and try to work out what exactly the Gospels are. One story on which they are all clear, concise and more or less agree is the story of the crucifixion. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Every year at Easter, Christians in the Philippines reenact the crucifixion of Jesus as described in the Gospels. They actually volunteer to be crucified. 
They do it because they believe it will help them to purge their sins. For the onlookers, it's a bloody and brutal reminder of what happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago. Crucifixion was the most cruel and atrocious punishment that the Romans could inflict. And it was inflicted only for treason and only on slaves. If you were a, a nobleman and you were a traitor, then normally you were strangled, something much simpler and much easier and much less painful. <laughs> After condemnation, the uh, beam, the cross beam, was strapped to the shoulders of the criminal, and he paraded through the streets with his arms stretched out. <laughs> At the place of execution, then, nails were hammered into the hands and the feet. In the Philippines, they use real nails. <laughs> they do experience the real pain that Jesus felt. In fact, a man nailed to the cross does not die from his wounds. He dies, surprisingly, from suffocation. Hanging just by your arms from a cross, your chest is compressed. It's hard to breathe without supporting your body weight on your legs. Over time, the strain on the legs and the pain make that impossible, and you are unable to breathe. In the Philippines, the volunteers are brought down from their crosses within an hour. Death from crucifixion takes much longer, often several days. The only way to hasten death on the cross was to break the legs, making it immediately impossible to support your weight, and therefore to breathe. But the Gospels are all agreed that Jesus died after only three to six hours. The crucifixion began at the third hour. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Some think that the Gospel according to Luke has the shortest crucifixion. It was about the sixth hour, and when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he gave up the ghost. Matthew and Mark clearly have Jesus surviving a little longer. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out. The disciples wanted to take Jesus' body down from the cross immediately. But the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, was doubtful. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead. Pilate was reassured by the centurion that Jesus was dead. But this was the same centurion who had earlier said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Jesus' body was then laid in a tomb donated by a rich man, Joseph of Arimathea. This Joseph and a man called Nicodemus came to minister to the body. They came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pounds weight. These accounts, when viewed as an historical rather than a sacred record, may raise many questions. Why did Jesus die so quickly? Why did Joseph and Nicodemus take so many herbs into the tomb? But no one really doubts that Jesus was crucified. You read the story of the empty tomb, and on Friday someone is killed, and on Sunday they're gone from the tomb, and you ask the question, what might have happened? Either God raised him from the dead, which is the traditional Christian affirmation, or the body was carried away by someone, body stolen. And those two possibilities are even talked about in the New Testament. According to Matthew, the Jews who were hostile to Jesus' followers claimed that his disciples had stolen his body out of the grave and then pretended he was resurrected. While the enemies of Christians immediately came up with conspiracy theories to explain the resurrection, the stories told by the Gospels are very down to earth. They describe how Jesus was alive again. He ate, he drank, and Thomas could touch his wounds. It's therefore perhaps not surprising that people who have always looked for natural explanations of miracles have suggested that Jesus was alive because he didn't die on the cross. There are many versions of that story. One came up in a book years ago called The Passover Plot.